Hi, boys and girls. We are starting a new read aloud. It is our last chapter book this year, and I'm not going to have you be following along, but you're going to want to listen in carefully. You might even want to get a blank piece of paper and draw as we go along. That'll help you better answer the question at the end. We are going to be reading one of, from one of my favorite characters. It's a bit humorous. And it is called Hank Zipser. Help! Somebody get me out of fourth grade. It does seem to be the perpetual year. It keeps going on and on and on. So we're going to read through this. And I am so excited because we get to meet some new characters who live in New York City. School looks a little bit different there than it does here. So today we're going to begin in chapter one. Students, there will be excitement in the classroom today, my teacher, Miss Adolph, said. Can you feel it? I tried. Oh boy, did I try. I even lifted my palms off the desk and stuck them straight out in the air to see if they would pick up the excitement vibration. Nothing. I felt nothing. I looked around to see if I could see anything unusual in the classroom. It looked like the same old fourth grade at PS 87, where I had spent the last eight months of my life. Now, PS 87, that's how they name their schools in New York City, because there's so many of them. They don't have cool names like Alexander Middle School. Um, and PS stands for public school. Number 87. So he'd spend the last eight months of his life there. Same old pale green walls, same old desks lined up in totally straight rows, just like Miss Adolph likes them. Same old bulletin boards displaying the compositions of the best students in the class. Oh, in the case you're wondering, mine wasn't up there. Never has been, never will be. But Oops, that page stuck to you. Hey, a guy can dream, can't he? So what could Miss Adolph be talking about? Excitement in school? As far as I'm concerned, school and excitement just don't go together. I flapped my rock arms around again just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Frankie, I whispered to my best friend, Frankie Townsend, who sits across the aisle from me. Are you feeling the excitement? Zip, the only thing I'm feeling is the breeze coming out of your armpits. He answered, what's with all the flapping? Excuse me, Henry, Miss Adolph suddenly cut in. I looked up. She was staring at me over the top of her gray rimmed glasses. You seem to be in the midst of a conversation. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, we're almost finished, Miss Adolph. I said, we were just trying to feel that excitement you said was in the room. Everyone laughed. Correction. Everyone laughed, but Miss Adolph. She gave me that stare. You know the one. One more wisecrack and you're on your way to Principal Love's office. Stare. She's good at that. In fact, I think she invented it. Mr. Zipser, Miss Ada said, I hope you're not trying to be funny because if there's one thing that annoys me, it's funny children having fun. Would you like her for a teacher? Miss Adolf walked over to my desk and stood so close that I could see a piece of lint on her gray skirt. The one she wears every single day to school. For a second, I was tempted to reach out and pick it off. The way my mom always is picking bits of lint and donut crumbs and other stuff off of my clothes. There's something about a little clump of lint that, lint that screams, somebody remove me, please. My hand was just starting to reach out for Miss Ada's skirt when my brain woke up and shouted at me, hey, Zipser, Get your hand back here right now. You don't pick lint from your fourth grade teacher skirt region. 
that's beyond icky. Fortunately, I pulled my hand back just in time. Another trip to Principal Love's office avoided. I wasn't trying to get in trouble in class, but I'm going to tell you the truth because I feel I can trust you. It does feel really good to make 31 kids laugh all at the same time. And when you're doing that, you're usually doing something that's going to get you into trouble. Actually, on that particular Tuesday, it was only 30 kids that I made laugh. There was one, Nick the Tick McKelty, who definitely did not laugh. That was no surprise though. Nick McKelty only laughs at his own jokes, which by the way, are not funny and are really, really mean. Like the other day, we were playing handball on the playground and for no reason all at all, McKelty turned to Ryan Shimizato and said, Hey, punk, you're so short, you should play handball on the curb. And then he laughed and belted out so much bad breath that everybody on the court gagged <coughs> and ran for cover. Henry, I recommend you close your mouth and open your ears. Miss Adolph snarled as she walked back to the front of the room, because what I'm about to say has particular significance to you. I'm all ears, Miss Adolph, I said. And there was. I even stopped breathing for a minute so that there was nothing but wide open space between her mouth and my eardrums. There will be no school this coming Friday, she announced without even cracking a smile. It will be a day off for all of you. That definitely rocks me, Sadoff, I shouted. Oops, I did it again. I was the only kid in the class who had opened his big mouth. Everyone else had the good sense to just enjoy her announcement quietly. Not me. It's like the minute something comes to my brain, it just slides right out of my mouth. I really have to have a mouth cork made. I wonder if they make them kid mouth size. My other best friend, Ashley Wong, raised her hand. Are we starting summer vacation early? She asked. Frankie and I gave her a high five for the question. Absolutely not, young lady, Miss Ada said. Summer vacation is too long as it is. You fourth graders have too much time and too much fun on your hands in the summer. There's no need for excess fun. I don't even know how to comment on that because I know you and I are thinking the same thing. Now, I ask you, is there any such thing as a summer vacation that is too long? Let's answer that together. No. Who knows why there will be, who knows why there'll be no school on Friday, Miss Adolph asked. Heather Payne, who always knows the answer to everything, raised her hand and waved it in front of Miss Adolph's face like she was trying to swat a fly off her nose. I know, I know, I know. It's fourth grade parent-teacher conference day, Heather said in her little Miss Perfect voice. That's correct, Heather, Miss Adolph said. Good job remembering. It's easy to remember because we have it marked on our master calendar at home, Heather said. It's written on the square right by my dental x-ray appointment and my French horn lesson. Miss Adolph smiled. It makes me feel very warm inside when I see such excellent organizational skills, she said. My family's master calendar would definitely not make Miss Adolph feel all warm inside. That's because it lives in a drawer in the kitchen, buried underneath boxes of aluminum foil and wax paper and plastic baggies. It used to be up on the kitchen wall at the beginning of the school year. My dad put it up with a yellow thumbtack, but whenever my mom put, went to write on it, the thumbtack would fall out and the calendar would flop to the kitchen floor. Then our dog, Cheerio, would attack it and try to tear the pages off with his teeth. 
which is why our calendar now lives in the drawer. The purpose of these conferences is for me to go over your end of the year evaluations with your parents. Ms. Adolph was saying, I'm sending home sign-up slips for your parents. Have them pick a time slot. Please bring back the slips tomorrow. Ms. Adolph picked up a stack of pink sign-up sheets from her desk and walked around the classroom, handing one to each student. I'll be discussing your overall work with your parents, she explained as she walked, which will determine whether you can continue your educational journey into fifth grade. After she passed my desk, Nick McKelty leaned over to me as far as he could without bumping his Neanderthal head into the back of mine. In case you're wondering, Zipperhead, your evaluation is going to suck as always. I wanted to turn around and tell him to take his disgusting mouth and put it on a jet and send it into outer Mongolia. But I had already blurted out once today and I didn't want to be sent to principal's love's office, so I fought the urge. I felt McKelty's hot breath in my ear. It's a good thing it wasn't any closer to me because his breath would have melted the eraser off the top of my pencil. Forget it, Hanky boy, he whispered. You won't be seeing fifth grade. Everyone knows you're being left back, sucker. That did it. I spun around in my chair and stared into his snaggly teeth, which were pointing at me from every direction. You don't know what you're talking about, McKelty, I said. What everyone really, really knows is that you're a liar. Those are strong words, I know, but they're the truth. McKelty exaggerates everything. Just take the truth and multiply it by 100, and you have what Frankie, Ashley, and I call the McKelty factor. Like, he told us that he went to the opening Yankees game, and they asked him to throw out the first pitch, but he said no because he thought they should ask the mayor of New York instead of him. Nick McKelty, president of the fourth grade Bad Personality Club, didn't want to hurt the mayor's feelings right? Sounds like Darren Vader from Swindle, doesn't he? Some of the same characteristics in that um, antagonist character there, the bad guy. We have uh, um, Nick McKelty talking again here. Hey, zipper butt, I happen to know something you don't know, McKelty whispered. I tried to ignore what he said. I tried but I didn't succeed. McKelty's words started to buzz around in my head like a swarm of bees. It's amazing to me how one kid can make you so mad. Who was he, Nick the Tick McKelty, to tell me that I was being left back in the fourth grade? He doesn't know anything. That can't be right. Of course not. It can't. My head was thinking. Wait a minute, he might be right. I mean, I did get four Ds on my report card and I still can't spell. And well, math, well, enough said about that. I don't even know my right from my left. Oh no, I bet he is right. I'm going to be the only kid in my class repeating fourth grade. That means I'm going to be in the same grade as my sister and her geeky, fact-spewing, nose-blowing, allergic-to-chocolate-cake boyfriend, Robert Upchurch. This can't be happening to me. I exploded out of my chair, my hand shooting up into the air. Ms. Adolf? I shouted before she even called on me. Can I go to the library? The library? You? I have to find out how to dig a hole deep enough so that I can crawl into it and never be seen again. We'll come back for chapter two tomorrow. Hope that you enjoyed the beginning of our story. Hank Zipser, help 
somebody get me out of fourth grade 